This is the Mutual Audio Network. Shut up and listen. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance recommended. Oh, hi there. Clinton here. Today begins the Comedy Forecast 2022 Summer Spectacular, sort of a one-time collectible variant of the April Podcast Today Spectacular. You know, supply chain issues and all of that. This episode, and the one that will premiere on Friday, May 20th, make up a kind of preamble to the main story. Prequels to the sequel. A two-part lead-in. You get the idea. The main story... Batter Days will begin on Monday, May 22nd, with additional episodes dropping every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday through the beginning of August. So sit back, relax, and take a few notes if you like. We're going to get you up to speed for Monday's big premiere. The Comedy Forecast Network. Let's dog ear this for now. This is Comedy Forecast, episode 731. The Taco of Truth, brought to you by the Comedy Forecast Patreon patrons. Thank you. You wanted to see me, sir? This feels a bit cloak and dagger meeting outside the barracks after lights out. Chief, I was just down in the tunnels. The crawler assault vehicle seems to be in much better shape now than when I ordered you and Ten Toes to slow down your work decommissioning it. Would you mind explaining how... What's happening? Another town-wide blackout. They've been happening a lot lately. I haven't noticed them, sir. Guess I've been too busy trying hard to not be busy. Then explain this catastrophe, Chief. Why all the excellent progress? It's General Calamity's man, sir. That soldier is working at superhuman speed. He's determined to get the bus ready for its post-decommissioning assignment as a shuttle down there. I have to admire his commitment. Are you siding with the enemy on this issue, Chief? Enemy, sir? Strike that. Carry on not carrying on as best as you can, Chief. I'm going to try a different tactic to meet the objectives. And what are our objectives, sir? All in good time, Chief. All in good time. Where in the world is that incompetent... Sorry, Thomas. I got here to Little Wicker HQ as fast as I could. Great rotisseries of Robin Roberts. Do you have a taco? You didn't say how long this was going to take, and I'm hungry. Hart, I had to use up a lot of favors to arrange this interview with Higgins. We have to make the most of it. Right. You do remember who Higgins is, right? No, but I'm guessing you do. So who needs to panic? Ugh. Braxton Higgins is Head of Product Development here at Little Wicker. We're going to gather intel that will help us both with our assignments. Sounds good. I'm following up for my client, Abby Fallmarker. Your client is Abby Fallmarker? Owner of this company? Hart! She could have set up a meeting with Higgins without me burning through all my contacts. Why didn't you say something? No idea. Just like I have no idea why they didn't put guac on this thing. Sir? Hart, if you don't get your... Hey, you! You can go up to see Mr. Higgins now. Let's go, Hart. Hold on a second. You're gonna need this. Sorry, Thomas. My hands are busy holding a taco. You take it. A can of spray disinfectant? Is this a pandemic thing? No, it's a Brax Higgins thing. You'll see. The elevators are right over there. Never mind that. Where are the stairs? Oh, sure. Behind that door. Stairs? 
Great jumping jacks of Jack LaLanne. This is no time to become a health nut heart. Fall marker nearly had an incident with these elevators a while ago, Thomas. And I refuse to be somebody's fall guy by getting the shaft. We're hoofing it. Like, who is it? Like, Captain Bruja, come in. Thank you, ma'am. Like, you can just call me Cindy. I don't believe I've ever been in your office before. Like, it's really the library. Anyone can come in. It is interesting that you mentioned that. This tunnel setup of yours is certainly getting crowded. Like, yeah. But, like, it's not my setup. This is a community of, like, creative artists. I can tell. Ah, I see and hear that you have some of those purple spheres that provide light down here. Like, yeah, but a whole bunch of them were destroyed last year. So we've had to, like, put in some LED bulbs and a whole lot of candles. Sounds complicated. And dangerous. Like, dangerous? Dangerous? Who said anything about dangerous? Like you did. Just now. Ah, yes. I simply meant that with all these strangers down here, you have to be careful. Are you, like, calling these artists criminals? Not necessarily. I don't think any of them are pushing NFTs. But you can never be too safe. A milligram of prevention is worth a kilo of cure. I never thought of that. This, like, all happened so fast. There are 721 studios down here, and they're filling up fast. It might be nothing. You could end up with 721 wonderful artists. But on the other hand... Like, what's on the other hand? Exactly. You don't know. Like, wow. I never thought about the other hand. Well, Miss Cindy, I just came by to say hello. I will leave you and any valuables you may have in here, like certain important books, and go back about my military security business. Like, yeah, goodbye. It is time to call General Disarray. Those books about the spheres are practically in my hands right now. Ha. Ha ha. Here we are. The executive level. Hat. Last. Get it together, Thomas. This is only the second floor. Reporters. Aren't built to do stairs, Hart. Our power comes from our words. Then maybe you should have talked your way up the stairs. There's Higgins' office door. Let's get this over with. Another door in the episode. How many had it been so far? Three? Four? This detective had begun to lose count. Maybe if I back... What are you doing? Just open the door. Five. You must be Hardin Thomas. Mr. Higgins is expecting you. You can go into his office. He'll be joining you there in a minute. Braxton Higgins' office. Six. A shipper and pelican? Don't say it, Hart. I wouldn't dream of it. Seven. Sit down. We need to go over our notes and strategy while we wait. Right. What have you got, Hart? A taco. I already told you that. And it's getting cold. What have you got? Seriously? Fine. Looks like we'll go with my notes. Higgins is a relatively new hire here at LWB. His LinkedIn profile says that he has a background in... In chemistry. 
with a degree in basket design from MIT. He's an egghead. So what? MIT doesn't have a degree in basket design. Just one in basket robotics. Has it occurred to you that it might be a typo? Not on that page. I've never seen such a meticulous profile page. It was a little un... Eight. No, I have no idea who those two people were on the phone. Wrong number. Ah, you must be Hart and Thomas. The two reporters. Reporters? Who said that... Ah! That was my shin, Thomas. I know, Hart. Be quiet. We need this interview. What is that? A taco. Well, technically, it's half a taco. I'd offer you some, but I... How did you... Where's my wastebasket? Ah. Put that thing in here. Do it, Hart. Fine. I wasn't going to finish it anyway. I forgot to take the wrapper off, and I'm wood pulp intolerant. Now where is my can of disinfectant? I guess you can use mine. Stand back. I think you drowned it. Past the taco and get down to the business of business? Very well. As I understand it, you want to do a highlight feature about our innovative new basket designs. All my ideas, of course. Oh, really? Including the new spherical ones? Yes, indeed. You know, Miss Fallmarker, the owner of this company, wasn't convinced that they would be a success. A rather provincial and antiquated opinion, if I must say so. Apparently you must. Naturally, I knew that they were going to be the next big thing. Why is that? Isn't it obvious? They're spherical. By the way, why do you need two reporters for this story? Are you his trainee or something? His rather old trainee? Go with it, Hart. Yes, that's right. I used to run my own thriving, successful business. But now I'm stuck being a reporter. How very, very sad for you. I jotted down a few questions of my own. What? When? I wrote them down on that taco wrapper, the part I didn't eat. Let me just grab it and I'll... Stay away from that basket. You've already made enough mess. I work hard to keep this office clean. Back off, compadre. You need to take a vacation. I'll have you know I take one every May. Like clockwork. Wow. What a shock. Getting back to the actual interview, this reporter wants to know why the Little Wicker Company refuses to refund me... I mean the average citizen, for my purchase of one of your so-called spherical baskets. Why would we do that? That has been Little Wicker Company policy for as long as I can remember. Well, times are changing, Mr. Thomas. After all, how could those baskets be bestsellers if we allowed people to simply return them? That makes no sense. Besides, we're no longer interested in receiving soiled products. In fact, what is that, Mr. Hart? Gum. You want a piece? It's tutti fruity. Did you not see the no gum sign in the elevator? Can't say that I did. We used the stairs. <sighs> Don't tell me those idiots ruined another elevator. What idiots? Never mind. Gentlemen. Now stop looking around. I mean you. This interview is over. Not until you answer a few more of my questions. I've got one first. Hurt. I couldn't help but notice. You have a plastic waste basket. It isn't a little wicker basket. They're They're everywhere. everywhere. 
Unsurprisingly, that wasn't a question. I'm waiting for one from our new line of coated wicker baskets. Coated baskets? Like the ones being made at the Franklin, Pennsylvania factory? Precisely. It's a process I designed myself. Do you know the problem with wicker, gentlemen? It's full of gaps. Things fall through gaps. Messy business. Coating the baskets will put an end to all of that. But to be objective, isn't it true that Abby Fallmacher opposes this absolutely insane idea? It's not insane. It's efficient. And neat. And tidy. And maybe she did it first. But over time, I'm sure that I can... Hey, boss. Boss, 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 boss. Who... Who are you? Let me handle this, Mulligan. I'm sorry, Mr. Higgins, but, well, Mulligan and I haven't been paid since... Well, gee, I can't remember when we were paid. So, the last time you called, I saw you were using your regular phone. And I traced... Oh, I didn't know you were in a meeting. Hey, others, others, others. We're Mulligan and Kipper. Sorry, Mr. Higgins. These two ran past me. It's okay, Mr. Security Guard. Security Guard? We work for him. He told us to take care of Miss Fallmacher. Great epiphany of Ida Wells. Just as I suspected all along. Generic Security Guard, arrest these people on suspicion of attempted murder. Buddy, I'm security. The best I can do is take away their employee badges. Hey, Kipper, Kipper, Kipper. I think we're going to get some badges. General Disarray seemed quite pleased to learn that I will soon have those books. Yay for me. I imagine I will be put in command of an expanded magenta fedora operation. I just have to go into the tunnels and get... Caution. You have reached security checkpoint Alpha. Please stand by. What is this? Ah, Bruja! General Calamity, sir! I see you've met checkpoint Alpha. As I understand it, you're responsible for it being here. Sir? I could never convince Cindy that she needed some sort of security. Then it seems you had a talk with her and that did the trick. She called and asked me to set something up. I've had this thing in a crate at the base for months. My man got it up and running in no time. Outstanding. It has some sort of biomatter, inorganic material scanner thing to detect unauthorized items going into or out of the tunnels. (laughs) It would take someone who understands it to explain it. But Cindy was satisfied that all her valuables are safe right where they are in the tunnels. Another power outage. It is a shame that the checkpoint cannot operate... Don't worry! This thing is hooked up to solar power, wind power, and even a few AA batteries! See? Thank you for the assist on this one, Captain. Especially with April right around the corner. April, sir? Traditionally, it's not a great month here in Middling Fair. All right, I'm off to fill out a form to order more requisition forms. As you were, soldier. Sir, yes, sir. Wonderful. Stupid machine. How much more complicated can this get? Warning. Possible threat detected. Scanning. 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 Current threat probability low, but individual added to active watch list. So, don't try anything funny. Captain Cliff Bruja. I had to ask. Please remember to take your warning receipt below. And thank you for visiting the tunnels, Middling Fair's premier artist community since 2021. In this episode, the parts of Cindy and Chief were played by Bonnie Kenderdine. Additional voices, as well as story and music, by Clinton Alvord. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved. My goodness, look at the time. Let's wrap this up, shall we? Oh, right you are, Sir Patrick. But first, a shout-out to the Comedy Forecast patrons. Thanks to Stan, Zach, Charlotte, Barry, Amy, Howard, Mike, Steve, Bryn, Chuck... 
Kyle, Darren, and a special welcome to our newest patron, Gary. If you'd like to support the show and get episodes before everyone else, just go to patreon.com and search for Comedy Forecast. All one word with the number four. As always, this is Sir Patrick Stewart. And I'm Clinton. Saying, that's, that's it. it. We're, We're done, 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 done. done. Bye-bye. <laughs>